And then somehow Palpatine returned. Nobody's ever really gone, Arch. Or at the very least, that's the general gist of this as Kyle rips off other internet people like the unoriginal. <laughs> that's what they Sash said in the is. show! That's what they said in the trailer. I'm just repeating the Star Wars trailer. You didn't even watch the Sack. trailer. You don't even know where that came from. Sack. Immediately. Immediately. <laughs> the trailer for the last Star Wars movie is like, <laughs> nobody's ever really done. <laughs> no. Yes, today's episode is definitely one of those moments where they're like, we don't know how to introduce new villains. So uh, let's rehash what we had because uh, we have no idea where the story is going and... Uh, if you just sort of repeat the previous season, maybe we'll find some better luck and can continue to milk the franchise a little bit further. Okay, so episode five and <sighs> basically uh, there's an action scene that's still listen, boring. I'm I am I am trying, okay, but for episode five now, and we are beginning th like this is like the the rings of power, the first few episodes where there's like there's no plot, and we're beginning now. Okay, so redheaded woman Womaxon is going to do the thing we called she was going to do in episode two. She's going to reunite the Mandaborians. So she's out into the galaxy to find more Mandaborians to bring home. The Mandaborians have a home now, in that the black person offered Mandal, like, hey, you want to live in my lawn? And he's like, no. Nah. But now he's like, yeah. You can live on Navarro. You can you can have the shitty area over on the other side of that volcanic rock. I'm like, oh, okay. So the plot <laughs> is the Mandaborians are going to unite. Again, we fucking called this way. And it's taken five episodes to get to this point. And Moff Gideon's alive, uh, that there by Palpatine. And he's been abducted by the Mandaborians because there's a tiny piece of Beskar armor in his uh, in his prison shuttle. And the little rebel dude is like, oh my god, the Mandaborians have rescued Moff Gideon. For reasons. Yep, because that totally lines up that the Mandaborians would do it. There was just a piece of Beskar there. And the immediate assumption the rebellion, New, new Republic people made was like, the Mandalorians are evil. They're not going to confirm this. They're not going to investigate. They, the Empire's not known to do, like, planting evidence or anything like that. No, no. no. Nope. No need to think beyond that. <laughs> because this is going to be the misunderstanding that brings in more, like, action-y pew-pew. And part of me is like, okay, action-y pew-pew, that's cool. And there's a lot of action in this episode, which is nice, but it's also pointless. Uh, Captain Treebeard arrives... And he starts bombing uh, Navarro, which has no defenses, no guards, no guard towers, no defense ships, no nothing. There you go. And he's like, please, uh, Republic, help me. And the Republic is like, dude, like, you don't even pay taxes. I'm not going to help you. Yeah, sorry. You're going to have to get bombed. <laughs> it's like, they, they, have, <laughs> yes. they have no reason to help either. That's the worst part. Like, uh, but through a series of events, like, Mr. Asian person is like, we gotta help them. Like, uh, but the public won't help. It's, like, it's not that they won't help. They literally can't. Like, the requisition clerk is like, my bruh. Like, we don't have enough shit to send to the people who do pay taxes. Like, this guy's the back of the line. He's like, that's very unfair. No, it's entirely fair, actually. Like, Republic is a failing government right now. We have to prioritize the member worlds. If you're not a member of the Republic... I'm sorry, but we can't help you. Yeah, but just from, just from a basic standpoint, okay? So you live in a hypothetical Ankapistani neighborhood, right? You're paying for security. So when, when your house gets robbed, security comes to your house. The security system has no reason to go to your neighbor when he gets robbed. In fact, your only ethical duty in that situation is to stand in your window with a cup of coffee and laugh. Like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Maybe raise the cup as the dude like cries. I did took all my stuff. Like, should have paid the taxes. Jeez, mate. <laughs> but, of course, this Supported. is setting up uh, the New Republic as the bad guys. Because, you know, they're using Mind Flayer technology on people. And we see, uh, see another uh, little clip of a uh, uh, person. Kyle, help. Uh, person. The evil girl. That's not very descriptive, but okay, good enough. I don't know her name. These characters all look the same. She looks like a dude. She's kind of evil. She mind-fucked that guy to death. 
Because she's there and she's like, ah, Navarro doesn't pay their taxes, so we can't really help them, which again is perfectly reasonable. And it makes the New Republic seem like the bad guys. Whilst the Asian dude is like, but we must help because he's the good guy. And so he finds Mando because, you see, the Mandaborians, who are incredibly good at this whole stealthy hidey hide stuff, okay? Um, he lands his ship right in front of their house and they're just like, well, I wish we had defenses or something, but... Uh. And then he reveals, nope. okay, so I found you because that droid you brought with you, well, he's been pinging me this whole time, sending me your GPS location, and your incredibly sophisticated cybersecurity systems didn't notice the radar signals going ping, 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 ping. <sighs> also, they, they just don't need, like, as soon as they figure this out, do, do they look at the droid, do they shoot the droid? There's like, huh, well, figures. <laughs> They'll look at it like, well, you know, you betrayed us all, but I guess. You do make excellent scones, we'll bring you along. We can't really get rid of you. We really can't afford another droid. <laughs> nope. And this is where last episode comes into bear as well, because like he pointed out, this was an episode, the, the dragon episode, was entirely designed to bond side character to the Mandaborians. And so big, strong Mandaborian stands up, and he does like, oh, side character's an asshole. Side character got lots of us killed. Side character just keeps asking us to die. He's frankly a whore, but it's the way that we go do it again. So off we go, and there you go. But he helped me, so I think you should all die for him too. And everyone's like, "Yeah," and they start nodding. They're like, "Yeah, he didn't help me, but like he did, you know, say that he helped him." So I guess I'll die for him. It's <laughs> the loosest of goddamn connections, but okay. So they off they go to uh, to the the kingdom of the man, and they fight Treebeard, who dies. I... Unceremoniously. <laughs> <laughs> like, goodbye, uh, evil villain person thing. We hardly knew ye. Like, you built up your ship. You even showed us, like, the cool mechanics. Like, we gotta deal with the turrets. The bottom turrets gonna shoot the, the people on the ground. The top turrets will shoot, like, the spaceships. It'll launch, like, snap fighters and snub fighters. And it'll be a really epic battle. And, like, it's over in a few minutes. And it was, like, they like they did everything. It, they, they followed it by the numbers. The anti-air guns were, you know, shooting at them harmlessly. The ground guns were harmlessly shooting at the guys on the ground because they were just unable to shoot at them. They were like, let's creeping barrage the people that are far away. That is one beautiful <laughs> point. Where, okay, the Mandaborans are fighting in the streets as this battle is going on. The civilians who fled are returning, also over open ground. And never they don't fire their weapons at any of this until the captain goes like, okay, you may fire, and the gunner's like, cool and so they slowly start walking their shots like some sort of goddamn video game boss <laughs> towards the civilians giving side character will make enough time to destroy their ship in like two hits yep and that 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 frigate wasn't that imposing whatsoever so the whole like idea that the new republic couldn't spare like a fighter to blow it up and with one bomber like no that thing apparently dies to just some basic shots. Like, it gets hit a couple times and it just explodes. I mean... It wasn't tanky at all. <laughs> a squadron of Y-Wings and some X-Wings for a escort could probably have cleared this up in about five minutes. This would have been much quicker, yeah. Like, they would have blown them up and then they would have air dominance and uh, the guys on the ground would surrender, as uh, would be customary. <laughs> The worst part is, like, I like the design of the ship, too, because I like this idea of basically a sort of close support light ship like like a frigate essentially with ground support bombardment capabilities and the ability to deploy its own covering fighters it's a nice idea it's kind of like a like a mobile base style thingy to bob you know it's yeah. it gets destroyed almost immediately and it does nothing as side character will mix and annihilates it with no sweat i particularly like the part where they strip off the air superior off the uh snub nose fighters following the air superiority fighter and then they get destroyed by the air superiority fire fighter and they're like well that was weird why did it shoot us down why did you why did you recall your snub nose fighters when your snub nose fighters finally had basically the air superiority fighter on the run because he couldn't lose them all uh, probably because they were mm. piloted by an urukai there was an Urukai dog hybrid thing. He died. And again, the, uh, it's, oh, it serves no purpose because Queen then has a quick talk to Queen 2, who's like, take over your helmet. And she's like, okay. And she does. And goes, like, go out in the galaxy and find more Mandaborians because we're re rebuilding the Mandaborian Empire. And it's like, yes, I know. 
like Jesus, this this didn't need five episode of build up. Most of the time I'm complaining about not enough build up. Here I am complaining about too goddamn much because the titular main character doesn't even exist anymore. Like side character's entire motivation for this show was to have a bath, and he's had that three episodes ago. Yep. It's one of the it's one of those things where like this this show is just like it's kind of a slog. Like the entire sequence, the entire action sequence today. Like it's was cute. kind of just boring. It's got flashing it was... lights and stuff, but it's like Did you ever feel at any point any of them are threatened whatsoever? Well, no, that's the other problem too, because you know none of these characters can die. Like not to mention as well, even if they could die, like the relative strength differential here is actually retarded. You've got like 20 Mandalorians in impervious body armor against half a dozen poorly armed, poorly organized pirate scum. Like, even without plot armor, this should be a stomp. Yep. And it was a stomp. In the show, they just absolutely rolled over them. <laughs> it was kind of tragic to watch these poor pirates just absolutely get des just destroyed. And it's building up to it, and it's just like, this show doesn't have a purpose to exist. Oh, God. I think the most painful part of this show so far for me is The Mandalorian, the character it's about, you know, he's he's never relevant in almost any scenes. He's sort of a background character. And the show's like, okay, look, he's there. He said some lines. All right, moving on to the more important characters, the side characters, which are actually the main characters. The main characters become... He, he's, like, literally just this annoying, like, background character. He's sort of like Baby Yoda. Like, they both exist because the show originally had them and they need to merchandise them because they're the only things that sold. Like, even Baby Yoda barely featured in this. Like, Baby Yoda has yeah. doesn't do anything either. The Mandaborian and Baby Yoda, the two main characters, don't have any purpose. Like, even Baby Yoda, usually he's on screen every five seconds gurgling at you. He only gurgles, like, once in this episode. A little bit of a gurgle. Yep, he did. That was back when they were doing the uh, presentation and convincing them to sign up to die. <laughs> the, the world does not need this TV show. It just doesn't. It's just not very interesting. Like, I think the most interesting thing I think I've seen in the show is, like, some of the New Republic stuff. Like, oh, the New Republic's struggling, you know, it's not easy. Like, after the war, it's actually a new hardship. It's like... We have not enough troops. We got not enough ships to maintain, you know, stuff. We're trying to bolster our numbers by taking in, in like, you know, former Imperial people. And we can't really trust them because, you know, some of them, their allegiances are, are you know, wavery at best. What Kyle was trying to say is stop with the action and just give me a bureaucracy TV show. That's all I want. Just show me a person. Just just show me that guy's paperwork, okay? He's got a full desk of paperwork. Show me just him stamping things like dunk, dunk, oh, God damn, don't have enough for that. Dunk. Show me that. Show me that. I mean, it'd be about more interesting. At least it would be about him rather than some side <laughs> Yeah, like he could have a fat wife who's cheating on him, a rebellious teenage daughter. You know, it could be a sitcom thing. You know, maybe he adopts or something. Like, show me this guy's story. He can he can whine about his job to me, okay? That's, that's good.